Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be talking about my March audiobooks. Let's get going. So I do feel like it went pretty well with audiobooks and some were hits, some were misses. But um, yeah, so my first book was A Girl in a Castle by James Patterson and we're following the main character named Hannah Doherty who is 18 years old and she lives in two timelines. She's got Blackbird, a starving poor village girl living in 1347 and she, while trying to save her family. While in the meantime, in the present one, she's a patient in Bellman Psych. They diagnosed with schizophrenia. So I gave it three stars. I thought it wasn't too bad. Um, but um, I just had a lot of questions that went unanswered. I didn't really understand how the time ability worked and how they, like the, and how Hannah was able to time travel. So that part wasn't explained at all. Um, also, uh, the story when Batman in the fantasy world is so, it's so cliche and dumb. I just did not like it. It was like the most basic story I had ever read. So that's pretty bad. Uh, I just did not like it, uh, and like why did it give, took so long for the bear to give food to the village, it's like she, and yeah he's selfish but it just took so long, and because like all it took was a pretty girl to show up at his door and, and he's like, yeah I will give your village some food, like what the heck, shouldn't you give the food a long time ago? So. Also, I I also thought that was too easy. I was like literally thinking all over like, oh, he's gonna poison them with that food and so on and so forth. That's just my thinking. But um, I didn't really count John in. He just went through Hannah's personal, like medical reasons without without her permission, and he told Ellie to like impersonate as a doctor so she could get the records be and like. Really, like, I just did not why, like why he did. He, like, he could have asked, but like, yeah, obviously they got to say no, but like, to go into her medical records, it, come on. Like, I, like, did he not think this through? Like, it would affect his job. Like, that would be automatically affect his job. Which it did, spoilers. It did affect his job because of that, so. I'm sorry, but you kind of deserved it. I'm sorry. Mm. And honestly, it had and this book had no reason to be so long. It had 111 chapters, so it really had no reason to be that long. In all honesty, um, maybe 60 chapters at least, 50 something like that. Uh, and yeah, so this book. I thought I hadn't done a good job of dealing with mental illness, depression, suicide. So it was a heavy read, so do be careful when if you are reading this. And um but regardless, like the one thing the book had done was that we shouldn't call them crazy because it's not their fault for the way how they are. It's not their fault and we should just not call them crazy. So I do agree that the book had said that. I thought that like that was nicely done. I, I disagree. We, we just shouldn't call them crazy. And you know, we should just help them where we can, how we can. So, yeah. But my next book is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. And we're following Signia, who is a girl who has been born with meth around her as she comes of age to 20 and therefore she has access to her sizable fortune. But there seems to be a curse of follows her guardians around, killing them one by one. Unable to die, she is found to have the ability to talk, interact, and get angry at death himself. However, after a final member was willingly taken away from her, Signa needs this fortunate placement to end better and is willing to fight death to get her way. So I did not finish this book at all. Like I finished it, 
I DNF this book at like 50%. I was just annoyed throughout the book. <laughs> it was just so boring and nothing was happening. I did think Sengya was an okay character, but I didn't like death at all. And I didn't know, like, I don't really understand because all the reviews are like, I think I'd fight stars, fight stars, fight. And so, like, do you guys not understand the relationship between death and Sengya? It's like they were literally just ignoring it. So what happened with them is just he literally had like this weird fascination with Singa since she was a baby. A baby. And so she was literally he was literally falling in love with her. He was like waiting for her to grow older so she so he can fall in love with her. I'm like, that's just gross. And they were just like grooming and all that, you know, predatory behavior. I just didn't like his personality. It just rubs me off the wrong way. And I didn't really feel comfortable with that either. So, what that did, he was just creepy and disgusting. And so I don't get how the people couldn't see this kind of relationship. Other than the people who gave two stars because I'm telling you we can open more of our eyes. But like, it was just so gross, so I did not de like death at all. And that was the only reason why I could not finish the book, because of that relationship they had. So, the only thing I did like about Signa is that she is an introvert, like me, hello. <laughs> and you know, she gets so excited about something, you know, like getting a and she like, gets excited about socializing, but it really drains her when hanging out. So from what so um yeah, so from what I can tell, I don't think this book should be for thirteen to eighteen age range considering the relationship of death and singer and like the se sexual foreplay. So in all honesty, this book should have been marketed as an adult. So I really wish they did the marketing a bit more. So, um, yeah, because I could not. I don't know, I just can't. Like, it shouldn't be for the age range 13 to 18. It shouldn't. Uh, so, this one really sucked. So, yeah. My next one is the, is the Drawn Words by Emily Lloyd James. And the following man, who is the last one, a diviner in the kingdom, and she is on the run from the king after she was used unknowingly as a weapon. So she needs to escape and start over, and however, she has been approached by her old mentor, Lenville, to join a job to steal from the prince in the magic realm. So they recruit a few others for the crew, and the most important of them of them are corgi. So this book wasn't really that bad. I gave it a three stars. I thought the setup of the, I did really like the prologue, and I thought it, and I thought I had the setup for the book really nicely, and it started out really strong, but it kind of fell flat throughout the book. Mid was an okay character. I like how she started out strong. She was intriguing. And her power seemed really cool, and she was a powerful water diviner, which just kind of reminds me of Avatar: The Last Airbender. I love that cartoon. I thought it's like one one of the greatest cartoon show ever, next to Teen Titans. But I really loved Avatar. Um, but eventually, you know, Man started to annoy me, and I didn't really care about her. And what happened? I also thought the pacing of the book wasn't that greatest since everything became so slow just to make a point. Uh, I really hated it. It kept on dragging. It's like, are you gonna make a point already? And so that really sucked. Um, so, and because of that, I just didn't want to continue. I thought I was bored with it and I didn't really like the other characters. And the ending, uh, the ending promised. Uh, then it was just a promise, in all honesty. It's like, it's so predictable, but it was really promising, in all honesty. The ending was really promising if it did not do that move, which I have predicted that it would, and I'm so mad. 
Like, why'd you do it that way? And just, uh, why? But anyways, I don't want to spoil it, so, um, yeah. And but like, because of what happened in that ending, it just took out the suspense, and I'm like, uh, they got another great plot. And I didn't like the ending, like, the actual ending of the book, but, like, I, once again, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm just so mad at it, as to what happened towards the end. Uh, but oh well, it is what it is, I guess. And also, I did not know that this book was based off from the Welsh, from the Welsh mythology beyond King Arthur, so it was actually based on, I don't know how to say this, but it's Cantian and Gualde, something like that, I, I know, I, which is like a second, uh, a second kingdom that is off the coast of Wales, which I did not even heard of this at all, so, so I thought it was a really cool mythology idea, so I thought that was really cool. And it did kind of remind me of Atlas, with the whole second city or the kingdom and like that. I do like Atlantis, I wish it hadn't sunk it. I think it would still be cool to see it, but um, yeah, that just how things going. And my next book is The Midnight Girls by Alicia, by Alicia Janiska. Uh, so we're following two, from two perspectives, we have Marinka Marinka and Zoisa, I think that's how you say her name names. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. So we're following the two girls who has been taken by a witch at such a young age to be their servants and have been in competition with each other ever since. They always want to do outdo out each other. And so they have this is a YA fantasy that has been set in a snow cloaked kingdom of witches are burned and the two enchantresses secretly compete for the heart of a prince only to discover that they might be falling in love for each other. And this is supposed to be like the Wicked Deep meets House of Salt and Sour. I loved House of Salt and Sour. So that's why that's the main reason why I picked it up. I did not read the Wicked Deep yet, so I might read it soon. Um, but um, yeah, so I gave it two stars. I thought it was boring, and there were times where I wanted to DNF this book because it was so boring. But it did have like a nice setting and like the magic dripping from everywhere, from from like every scene. But I just couldn't get into it. I'm just so sad. I just couldn't get into it. Um, it feels too much, too heavy handed, and too simple. I don't like how the trauma was handled with the characters. Like, one of them recognized it was trauma, and the other one was just brushing off and gave so many excuses. So, like, girl, that is your trauma, not an excuse. So, okay. But, um,. So I really thought that was gross and sloppy, especially how at the at the end the abuser did something to make did something good to make it up for it. I just thought that just didn't really sit right with me. It's like no, no. Um, and like you know, it was just sad because the the main character like she just like the one of the main characters she just never realized it was abuse so I, I just find it really sad and, and, and I thought we never had a closure because of it so I wish we did but um yeah and another that should have been explained more that I don't know why people do this but they see abuse as a romance it's not a romance come on can others stop writing this it just uncomfortable in so many ways, and just it's just not romance. I'm sorry, but it's just not romance at all. So I don't get why they always have to have abuse them that sees it as as romance instead. So I'm like, come on. And um, but what I did like though, that like was that there were diverse characters. I by 
<laughs> Again, I only felt like the author added them for the sake of being diverse, otherwise it would just suck, apparently. And so the so again the romance felt forced and there were no character growth at all. I also feel like the book was doing way too much. There was like so many days and it felt like the author didn't know what she, she wanted to do. And so there was like the romance, the betrayal, the revolution, the abuse, and it was just overwhelming and way too complicated for me to grasp as to what was happening. It was just way too much and most of them did not make any sense. So, th so other, um, yeah, otherwise this book did have potential, uh, but unfortunately it just didn't. So my next book is The Lost of Carry by Sarah Penna. And it's, it's a historical fiction with two timelines, where it's set in the past and one in the present. The present will following Caroline, who is having trouble with the relationship of her husband. She found out that he was cheating. And so, you know, when she goes to London, and then in the past, she finds and while during that time, Caroline finds like a vial with a bear in it. And in the past day, we have another woman who has an apothecary, but she has a secret with that. And then she, she is poisoning bad men with requests. So, I give it three stars. Um, I do like these kind of books. I really like the interesting part of it, like the history. Like the historical part, I really do love them. Um, you know, in the past we get to see what was happening, while in the present we are seeing the main character trying to figure out clues as to what happened in the past. Um, I did enjoy, so in the past, I did enjoy Elijah's character. I really liked how we got to see from her side of the view, but in the present, I didn't really like Caroline, who we are following. Everything came to her so quickly and so convenient. She barely had anything, like, she barely didn't have to figure it out. And, like, everything just came to her, so that really sucked. And, and you know, she was able to figure it out when the apothecary had once been in, so, like, wow, that was, she just had so many luck on her side, I guess. And, you know, everything was just so easy for her, which took out the mystery part, unfortunately. Um, she also made, Caroline also made pathetic decisions, you know, just by being silent. Because she thought being charged for trespassing. This is so stupid. Like, she was literally being silent because she thought trespassing was worse than being potential murderer. So, like... You worry about being a trespasser, but not a potential murderer? Okay, whatever suits you, I guess. I also never like Caroline's husband. He also made stupid decisions as well. Like, he drank and poison. So, like, he had a cold, which apparently was really bad. So, she, uh, so he asked Caroline if she had like, any kind of medicine to help him out, which she did. So, Caroline told him. And so he went to get it. So what went wrong with this one? So basically what happened is that no, he not only knew this was a poison and you were not supposed to drink it. I think the book mentioned like you're supposed to rub it or something like that. I can't really remember what the medicine was about. But he knowingly drank that medicine knowing it was a poison which you should not drink. And he did it anyway. So I really did not like that at all. So it was just, I like, why would you do that? C come on. So, you know, and for some, and the husband is like, su is supposed to be intelligent. You're not so intelligent. And he only drank the medicine because he thought he would gain some sympathy from Caroline. So, uh, I'm just done with those. I'm just done. <laughs> and like, yeah, so that part really frustrated me so much. Like, come on. So, but there were parts I thought Caroline held dealt. There were parts where Caroline and how she handled, like, the affairs. I thought she handled the affairs really nicely. 
But um, I still think the book wouldn't be so bad if we didn't have Caroline's story to it. I just don't think it was necessary and if we focus more on the past, which is really interesting, way more, I think the book would have been fine. This book is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayburn and, and we're following Veronica Speedwell who has just buried her spinister aunt, her last living guardian, and she is ready for another adventure. However, this adventure is much closer to home that she could have anticipated. Arriving home from her aunt's funeral, she surprises a burglar and he just arrived to London with the German Baron who claims to have known her mother and father, both of whom Monica has no remembrance of it. So, I don't really have too much to say about this book. Um, I gave it a 3.5 stars. It wasn't bad. I did like the main character where she was being smart. She was rude and blunt, so, so I, at least she was honest about what she was saying, so she didn't sugarcoat it. Um, but there were times when I was bored and there were times that it kept dragging and sometimes I felt confused. And, and I kind of like Stoker, even though he was annoying, he was supposed to be an he was supposed to be the mountain, but he wasn't. Um, he was just booting and kept telling how awful he is. So I'm like, okay. But um, yeah, he, but I did like the relationship between Stoker and Veronica. I thought it had developed really well. I, I thought it wasn't forced. And it, I just feel like the development of the relationship between them. So, and I also... The one thing I didn't like was that how Stalker was able to take down... He was able to take the men that were larger than him and they also had like random South American weapons even though they were in London, so... Okay. But um, yeah, so I thought that was kind of random and I also didn't like how some parts of the chapters were set in circus. I also thought it was random and you know... I just thought it was confusing because of that circus and the circus just wasn't really necessary in all honesty. But um, yeah, so those are my thoughts. I didn't have too much to say about it. So um, yeah. and my last audiobook is The Grim Grimoire's Ghost by Laura Paul. And we are following in the Elite School and Grimoire's Academy, we have Yuki, Ella, and Laura, Lori, who are trying to cope with the death of their best friend and roommate Ari. Her death was deemed as a suicide, but the three girls did not believe that it was suicide, but something much bigger. So upon the arrival of the new roommate, Nani, the girls decided to discover what truly happened to Ari. The night she drowned, and mysterious book is found that may be linked as to why girls are dying and the curse that started it all. So I give it a 3.5 stars as well. So again, I don't have too much things to talk about. I thought the book was enjoyable, the mystery point was nice, and I also liked how it was connected to the fairy tales, but I wish the author had touched more on the fairy tales because it just sounded so cool and unique. I also really like the representations that, such as black, Asian, lesbian, bi, pan, disabled, and so on. I thought that was really, really nicely done. I really liked the representation. I also liked how the characters have flaws and how they struggled with it. Um, but the pacing was a little bit tough. It started really slow and I also wanted to the end of this book because of the pacing. But um it did like it took forever to reveal who the murderer was and by that time I just didn't really care who the murderer was because it was just so slow. And um yeah, so I sometimes find the book being repetitive, but regardless I thought that, but regardless, the book did eventually pick a speed, and it did eventually became intriguing, so, yeah. 
Okay, those are all the audio books in March that I have read, and that was actually quite a lot in March. I hadn't really expected. But um, yeah, so let me know what audio books you have read in March. So please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye! Thank you.